Hi. It's a little while since I've done a film review, and this film seems to be uh, as topical as any. Um, and the film is Malcolm X by Spike Lee, 1992. I'm watching this actually right now. I've just paused it um, because I've watched the film many times. I know it pretty well. Um, and I'm watching it on an old VHS, so no copyright infringement intended. There we go. It's an old uh, VHS box, and I still have VHS player. Um, come many DVDs as well, but uh, I like to utilize it when I have it. So um, basically, this is a biographic film about um, the famous black um, civil rights social leader Malcolm X, who was active in the United States um, at the same time, actually, as Martin Luther King, the 1950s and 60s. Um, and the film, it's quite a long film, it's over two hours, I believe, but it, it comprehensively goes through his life from, um, his troubled childhood, um, the murder of his father, um, being separated from his mixed race mother, um, basically going through a life of petty crime and escalating up to quite serious, um, quite serious crime. Um, and the film shows that whilst he was incarcerated, uh, actually for soliciting with white women, um, he met a representative of the Nation of Islam and then, of course, became associated with the organisation. Um, now, the film stars Denzel Washington. Um, it's a superb performance. I've seen many Denzel Washington films. Um, I think it's Oscar worthy, I really do, uh, as a performance by a leading actor. And some feel that Washington was robbed of that uh, accolade. That year it actually went to, um, well, it would have been um, Academy Awards the following year, 1993, of course, for the films of 1992. It went to Al Pacino in the Center for Woman, which is also a great movie, I've also. Um, but you could see why many would say that Washington deserved that. Not taking anything away from Al Pacino, I thought he was great in the Center for Woman, but this was a very powerful performance. Now, the film's directed by Spike Lee. Clearly, there's a political angle to it. Um, and it would be wrong to say that Spike Lee is coming in with a completely sort of neutral perspective. You know, he's a, he's a social activist. He's, um, he's a black filmmaker. Uh, he clearly has an angle. Um, however, the film, I think, is fairly comprehensive. It shows, for example, how... He gradually becomes a spokesman for the Nation of Islam, which then, as with now, was a very controversial organisation. And it shows the sort of charisma and oratorical power that he had, not dissimilar to Martin Luther King and other figures, albeit with a very different approach. Um, without doubt, Malcolm X had oratorical skill, and I've seen archive footage of, of the actual Malcolm X speaking. Um, Again, Washington's portrayal was incredible. Um, it's almost like Malcolm X ghost. Anyway, um, so it shows his rise through the sort of power of the nation of Islam. And then it, I'm at the point now where it's starting to show there was dissent within the, the nation of Islam, or rather there were ministers within the nation of Islam who began to feel that Malcolm X was a threat. He was uh, showing too much influence in light, um, sort of undermining the leadership of Elijah Muhammad. And at first, Elijah Muhammad supported him, but then he too began to turn against Malcolm X. And basically, um, I think there's probably a few things at play there. I think it was politics, but also just human jealousy. I think they were jealous of Malcolm X's influence. Um, there's going to be conspiracy theories over his assassination. The film depicts that. Um, in you know pretty raw detail um and to this day there'll still be sort of arguments over exactly who was responsible i know some men were implicated from the nation of islam but what's interesting about the film just deep pause there what's interesting about the film is it doesn't gloss over some of the um the nuances and the the complex matters. So, for example, there's an interesting scene, and I'm pleased Spike Lee included this, a young white woman 
comes up to uh, Malcolm X and others as they're going into, I think it's university campus, and she says that, you know, I, I support your movement and I, I'm not part of what my ancestors have done. What can I do to help you? Malcolm X calmly replies, nothing, and just walks on. Um, so it shows definitely the black-centric um, identity politics very, very much at the core of the black nationalism within the nation of Islam. Uh, Muhammad Ali, of course, became associated with the movement. It's interesting, actually, the film doesn't have any reference to Muhammad Ali. I'm not sure if that was a conscious decision by Spike Lee, as it would be kind of, he was too big a personality, and if I guess you brought Muhammad Ali into it, he would maybe take the screen or something, I don't know. But that's significant. Muhammad Ali and Malcolm X were, of course, close friends. Ali turned against X uh, because Ali was brainwashed by Elijah Muhammad. He was very much taken in by the organisation. The Michael Mann film, Ali does feature in quite significant detail um, Ali's involvement with the Nation of Islam. But like I said, please, Spike Lee included that scene. He also included an interesting scene before that where um, a Nation of Islam activist is, uh, is apprehended by the police, he's injured, and it showed the power that Malcolm X and the organisation had to defuse the situation. It's a very, very political film by nature. Um, it's not without fault, for example, early on there's some crafty editing by Spike Lee, or um, I guess it would be the editor who done that, but being the director Spike Lee would have known, where um, a young Malcolm X, whilst he's still, you know, very much the cool cat, uh, the petty criminal, is um, listening to the results of the Joe Lewis-Billy Conn fight of 1948, I believe it was. Um, and the radio announcer says he's a credit to his race. No, that's edited. It's the famous expression, actually, and it was with the Lewis Schmeling fight, was he's a credit to his race, the human race. This was from a New York correspondent. Uh, so that's a little bit of manipulation on the part of Spike Lee to edit that bit out uh, to make him just tie into the narrative. It, it's a small point, but it's just as a matter of historical record. The reporter actually said he's a credit to the human race. That was the important caveat um, referring to Joe Lewis. Now, the film has a good soundtrack um, by, I think it's Arrested Development at the end, Revolution, it's a great song. Um, and after the assassination scene, it does a sort of apology of Malcolm X's legacy. I mean, the film is absolutely uncompromising in, in its eulogising of Malcolm X. Perhaps that is a point of critique. Um, it ends with uh, sort of speeches by famous black people, um, most notably, uh, excuse me, Nelson Mandela, who talks about brother minister Malcolm X. Uh, anyway, if you haven't seen the film, do check it out. Um, yes, there's a political angle. Yes, there's a narrative. But it just gets you thinking about, about the sort of dynamic of that time between Martin Luther King's direction and Malcolm X's direction. Now, I don't want to be misunderstood. The Nation of Islam, in my opinion, was a vile racist organisation. Malcolm X was closely tied with that for much of his life. But an important part of the film is that when he um, started breaking away from the organisation and Elijah Muhammad for his assassination, he visited Mecca, he met white Muslims, and he began to change his rhetoric and soften his rhetoric about white people, because the whole narrative of the Nation of Islam, like every ethnocentric organisation, is us and them. Uh, there's a bit where he just comes, where he's talking to the other inmate in, in prison, and the other inmate says, I don't, or Elijah Muhammad doesn't say some white men, he says all white men, and Malcolm X very much was taken in by that mentality, that all white men and all white people are the problem. Um, so this is one of the biggest flaws with this ethnocentric mentality of um, black nationalism and I see it to some extent with some people within Black Lives Matter I mean not the movement as a whole of course there's a lot of white allies 
a lot of those white allies, in my opinion, are not really helping anything with their intent virtue signaling. But um, it's just an interesting thought provoking film. Um, it does eulogize Malcolm X to an extent. Cinematically, I think it's a powerful film and it, it done well, it got critical acclaim. Um, but, you know, it makes you think, what would Malcolm X think of the current situation? Um, clearly, Malcolm X would know, and I'm reluctant to use the term, but Uncle Tom, that he's responsible for inciting a lot of the animosity towards black conservatives, along with the Nation of Islam. But it is important to note that Malcolm X did, um, did change his, his thinking before he died, and he did start to be more of a reconciliatory figure. Um, I know he met Martin Luther King once, only once. They were probably the two most famous black men in America at the time, but they did meet once, and uh, that would have been an interesting meeting. This is when I X was distancing himself from the organization. So, um, interestingly enough, Muhammad Ali, like Malcolm X, also began to moderate in his later years and distance himself from those sort of racial politics. In my opinion, um, Muhammad Ali has been overly eulogized as a as a civil rights figure. Um, I think he definitely displayed some of the racism that came through with the Nation of Islam. Um, so anyway, it's just a thought-provoking film um, about the life of a very interesting man. Um, I'm not saying Malcolm X doesn't have a lot of points of critique, but there's not many people that had the sort of biography he had to go from the childhood he had, to be a criminal, to being um, a spokesman of a very controversial organization who then turned his back on all the whole side of crime. It's one thing, I guess, to say for the Nation of Islam, some of the message was good. They were outspoken against crime and they were very strong on issues of personal responsibility and black fatherhood and stuff like that, which is to be commended. However, by their very nature, they were divisive and are. They're still in existence. Their influence has declined, but still very much in, in existence. Um, so when we check out Malcolm X 1992, Spike Lee, it's I'm not going to say it's a completely neutral film. It definitely, definitely has an angle. Spike Lee definitely has an angle with it. And that's no mystery. Spike Lee has always been a very political filmmaker, but it's worth checking out and thought provoking. Um, by the way, if if you're white and you watch a film, don't be put off. There is unquestionably racist language about white people, all white people. But watch a film through to the end, because it's not just a white shaming film. It's more about the evolution of Malcolm X as an individual and how he actually began to change his views in the end and became more of a reconciliatory figure. That's very important. That's a very, very important point in the film, in my opinion. Um, you know, if Malcolm X was just a demagogue throughout his whole life, then I don't think there'd be any material for a film. I don't think there would be, I don't think he'd be as famous as he is. I mean, he'd just be another black, angry black nationalist, you know. And there's a very good reason why Malcolm X is viewed in a different way from, say, Louis Farrakhan and others. Check it out, Malcolm X, 1992.